This interview is part of the History Heard Project. The content of the interview may be used for historical research. However, no part of the video itself may be reproduced without the express written permission of an authorized representative of History Heard. Today is October 7th at 7.15 p.m. This is an interview with Natalia Moore in Naples, Florida. She was born on June 11th, 1969 in Moscow, Russia. Hi. Hi. So you grew up in Moscow during the 1970s and 1980s. At that time, Russia was the world's leading communist superpower. What was it like to grow up as a teenager and young adult in Russia? Um, for example, during that time, rock music was sweeping through Western Europe, Asia, North America. Um, all the teenagers were listening to the Beatles, Rolling Stones, Michael Jackson, watching MTV, listening to the radio. What was that experience like for you in Moscow? We, uh, we have all kinds of music. Uh, of course, the majority it was Russian, just because we tried to protect, to keep our culture and our language. Uh, but we also had the music from the foreign countries. Um, and uh, let me tell you, it was um, not everything, but the best, the best, because it was pre-selected by um, uh, by special service and. Uh, 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 this music was always going with special comments uh, just to appreciate it better. Were most people satisfied with that or was there a black market for music? Um, not every, not uh, every person was satisfied. Uh, like everywhere in the world, um, there are always a um, small group of people who has a protest um, against uh, the system, against uh, the freedoms and everything. And uh, they create a black market. And, uh, whatever they were uh, trying to, you know, um, have on this black market. Uh, it was the music, but not um, the best music. It was just uh, everything what you, uh, what you can get uh, outside of the Russia. And as I said, um, they create this as a protest. Also during the 70s and 80s, shopping malls and enormous supermarkets were being developed in the Western world. What was it like as a consumer to go shopping in Russia while it was communist? Were there shopping malls, were grocery stores the way they are here? Uh, we have stores, different, small and big, and uh, uh, one of them, uh, the world famous Goom, who is standing next to the Red Square, and he has a 500 years of history and the last 120 is a building that uh, stable right there and it's the best and the, the biggest in Europe um, uh, trading house. Uh, uh, so we have everything what we need at that time because we had a different values. People um, was not uh, so greedy about half uh, more than they need. They were working hard and they were rewarded by our government. So uh, everything what they would need, uh, they had us. So there was no dissatisfaction or deficits? No, no, let me tell you. I was able to eat a red, a black caviar every day, half of glass. So now in compare with, with that time, I, I cannot afford this. What less caviar? Were there um, long lines at the supermarkets no, and stores? No, there was not long lines uh, during this period of time. It came later when Soviet Union uh, collapsed and uh, we had a time that called perestroika. Television was also an enormous part of growing up in Western culture during that time. Um, was there television available in Russia? If so, how many TV stations was it censored? Yes, we have a TV and that was the only one channel and that's probably uh, everything were, uh, what uh, Soviet, uh, Soviet Union people were need at that time. Uh, the major program was in use and uh, there was something for every age, like for the children and uh, I mean that, that was probably a technical um, um, availability for this time. Right now we have like everybody in the world over a thousand channels and you can watch whatever you want but at that time one channel was just is enough. How were other countries portrayed on television? Uh, if there was something good like uh, news from um, uh, science discoveries um, uh, there always was uh, enough information about this stuff. Uh, 
and there was a bad things that um, uh, we were listening about other countries and because I believe it was part of the propaganda that Soviet Union is the best um, to show why we were the best. They, uh, we, uh, we, were, um, we were watching the news about what is not good outside just to compare why we are the best. So you grew up in the middle of the Cold War. What did the average teen in Moscow think about the United States at that time? Um, we never feel that um, United States is our enemy. There never was feelings like this. There was a slight, um, uh, slight feelings that somebody tried to make us enemies. But we always were happy if somebody comes uh, from United States to our country, like uh, uh, Dean Reed or uh, schoolgirl uh, Samantha Smith. Um, we were thinking, wow, that's so great. And uh, let's show them our country, how good here. And we were very happy when they were coming back and uh, tell uh, and, and told other people that uh, our country is a normal country without bears on the street. So um, it was always very good feelings. And we always wanted actually to communicate with other people. And um, things like um, uh, Olympic Games in 1980s or even before it was a uh, um, special um, event for youth from the um, everywhere on the on the world. It shows um, that we were always open for this communication. Between 1989 and 1991, Russia transitioned from being a strict communist country and society to democratic and capitalist country. In a dramatic series of events, which held the entire world's attention in 1991. USSR President Gorbachev was ousted by communist rebels who held him captive in Crimea. The attempted coup was stopped by supporters of former Moscow mayor Boris Yeltsin, who had become the new president of Russia. What was it like to live in, Ru in Moscow during this transitional time period? It was a very difficult time because one system was destroyed, the new one was not built yet, and the country was really um, suffering, people were suffering. Of course, um, uh, criminals immediately took uh, an advantage of the situation and they became our bosses of the everything. Um, that was a period of big deficit for everything, food, clothes, everything. Uh, as, as I mentioned, there was a lot of criminal stories in that period of time and uh, some people, they just could not survive. Um, somebody could not um, afford to live, uh, knowing that we had two times uh, money reform. That's really brought some people to real uh, poverty. Some people became very, very rich and uh, people who wasn't like in the middle, they became suddenly very, very poor. Are there any other experiences from the time during which you were growing up that would help people better understand what life was like in communist Russia? Oh, that was a great time. I keep in my memory uh, that the best years in my life and I'm kind of missing this. Why was it a more safe time, a happier time? It was happy time because, uh, as I mentioned before, people had uh, different values and it was safe because people had the different values because they were different and um, we were living with the idea that we are not the best country in the world and we build an even a better society and because all of this um, make us happy yeah well thank you so much for your time thank you